Hi, I'm Elizabeth Sung. I'm an actress and a director, and this is my life story. My parents, they both passed away now. Um, they were both born during wartime, um, right after the First World War. They've gone through two wars, so, you know, they learned very early on in life to have specific goals and about survival. They're very talented, very committed, very passionate and talented people, uh, born at an unfortunate time. So I feel that um, in my DNA, I have their gifts, somewhat. And um, I think during their lifetime, they have little choices because of wartime. And I feel really, really lucky that I could follow my heart and pursue what I love to do, which was first dance and then acting and then now acting and directing. Maybe you can clear something up. Dr. Mendel says you've been acting aggressively toward other patients. First of all, that is total fucking bullshit. And Con. secondly, why don't you just lead off with that? What are you talking about? Instead of pretending to give a shit how I feel. Now, apparently, you're becoming a bully. It was difficult. Mm -hmm. It was a time when I really start sensing uh, cultural divergence, um, d uh, d cultural dissonance, um, because I didn't come from a family that has the knowledge and the know-how of what it is like to become an artist. That's a luxury. So when I went to Juilliard, not only did I go to a very um, reputable conservatory, it was also adjusting to uh, American lifestyle, because I was born and raised in Hong Kong. It's also understanding kind of learn by doing what it is like to be a to be a professional dancer, which I had no knowledge of. In Hong Kong, if I were to dance three hours a week, that means taking two class a week, that is a lot because it's expensive. But at Juilliard, I very quickly uh, realized that I had, to do, I had to dance eight hours a day. That was a big difference and five days a week, sometimes six. And besides that, I also know that my training uh, was very different. I came from a ballet background. The syllabus was the Royal Academy of Dance. And in Juilliard, it was ballet-based, but it was modern. Uh, Graham or Jose Limon technique, which I knew nothing about. Ballet is about working, defying gravity, and modern dance is about working towards gravity. So there are so many things I, don't, I didn't know um, in terms of cultural adjustments, in terms of emotional and psychological adjustment to being an artist. It was tough, hmm. my first, particularly my first and second year. And I think, you know, I had a lower back injury, and I think a lot of my lower back injury had to do with pressure and had to do with not knowing how to use, utilize my physical instrument properly. Do you still dance anymore? No, I gave it up. I had to because of a lower back injury that uh, exacerbated during my time at Juilliard. But I was lucky enough after graduation to be a part of the Alvin Ailey Second Company which I had the pleasure of dancing with for three years. But after that, my injury came back, and that's when I had to reassess and think very, very practically if this is a journey that can continue or can I switch it and transfer it, and I did. I went into acting. I think in any type of uh, performance arts, be it dance, singing, um, acting, directing, it's all about storytelling. Dance, you do it with physicality and movement, without words. Acting, uh, you do it with words and emotion and physicality. Um, I come from a pretty complex childhood, uh, and I think that became the bedrock of a lot of emotional resources that I instinctually know how to utilize and transfer and connect to uh, when i um, given the opportunity to play a role or a character. So... 
if I if I had the opportunity to still dance, I'd probably still be my first choice of expression. However, since I had to make a switch, um, acting became very natural for me because it is an extension, and I love choreography. So, in acting, it's just a minimal utilization of physicality, but it is also human behavior. It is words. It is emotion. So, it's just an extension of my acting, uh, of my dancing, and my choreography. You know, I wish I could say I have a favorite child, because every role I I play, I see it as giving birth to a character. I love all of them, honestly, uh, because once I commit, that is the journey that I take from begin beginning until the project is done or my part is done. So within that space and time in the pre-production, in the preparation, in the researching and the thought process, that's where my joy came in, um, including, of course, the shooting process where you can continually find new stuff. And my joy as an artist, as an actor, is to create the most um, authentic and believable and human character, be it um, a protagonist or an antagonist. I guess, as you know, you're a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. I'm a filmmaker. We're all artists. And I think that is my for first and foremost identity. And then when the role calls for specificity about ethnicity, gender, and all of that, that that is when I can add to the painting of this character or the creation of this character. Um, of course, if I were to think about um, Asian American acting roles, we I feel we are still behind time. I feel the recognition of uh, what Asian American is in the eye of the American public is limited. And therefore, it is, I think, the responsibility is upon us, the filmmakers and the artists, to create that and to expand that and to um, make that compelling and accurate. Karen, Mrs. Wong is here. Oh, come on in. Timmy saw you at the supermarket. Oh, oh, that's just my volunteer work, for Jaime's sake. You have to stop that shit. <gasps> Excuse me? Timmy saw you fight with that man. He's embarrassed for you. Well, I don't know if it's a cultural thing and you're not aware, but you're being rude right now. Jody, can you help Mrs. Wong with the crib? You act crazy. I can leave the baby with you. What about you trying to cure him with your Chinese herbs? I mean, you need to accept him for who he is. I first want to talk about stereotype. Huh. Because we are all stereotypes, really, when we, when we are honest about it, you know, like, and especially in comedy. Comedy, comedy is an exaggerated way of looking at life. In a, in a way that is humorous. So therefore, when I do commit to a role and it calls for an accent, first I have to see if it is justified. If this person is uh, American-born or not American-born. If this person is not American-born, um, unless this person has a language talent, accent is going to be in his or her way of speech, which is authentic which is how this person, about this person's history and culture and background. I think the most important thing for me is not to be hung up in the accent, but in my choices of, of what I bring to this character. Is this character believable? Is this character um, a person, a human being? Or is, it, is this person a, a, a concept? That's where kind of I would come in and put focus on. Well, first of all, I have to say I applaud you for doing this because this is one of the many ways that we can do by making our voice, our presence visible and known. Uh, we have to be an activist and an advocate uh, for our own um, entertainment history. We have a short history in comparison to uh, probably the... Uh, general American public, which is Caucasian, or the African-American um, entertainment um, industry. So therefore, it is really upon us to do good work, if you're a filmmaker or a documentarian, or um, if you're an actor on screen, just do the best. Uh, give it your most imaginative and compelling work, 
And also, once you've done the work, whether you are behind the scene or in front of camera, promote it. Tell your friends. You utilize the social media. I think the social media has given us so much opportunity. We are now connected to the world. We are not just limited to geographically uh, in time and space. So that is our best friend. Utilize it, promote it, tell people about it, get people to see it. And when we have an audience, when we are connected with the audience, then we have a chance to present our version of our story. I think the global aspect mm -hmm. that, again, since we are now entering into the d digital media age, I think um, the task of movie making, actually the technical part of it, is so much easier. And therefore, that allows for a lot more opportunity to have co-productions internationally. That's what excites me. In terms of, in terms of um, storytelling, probably you will see a lot more interchange of culture um, in these co-productions. And maybe sometimes you don't even have to be at a, at a different country to shoot part of the scenes. Um, I, I think technology excites me and the, and the global aspect of filmmaking excites me. Because then maybe will be an answer about stereotypes, about ethnicity, about having definitions between races. Because it's ultimately about human story, isn't it?